say hi. Hi. I'm not gonna wear these. Okay. Oh. Should I wear these or not? Wear them. We're all here together. Whole, whole fam. Clyde, you're like sitting on top of me. We never really said hi, Clyde and I. Clyde! Don't lick my face. You just want to be to starve to show. To starve to show. Are you going to teach him how you edit your Instagram videos, Clyde? I mean, your Instagram stories, Clyde? You are? Thanks for sharing. He likes the natural look. He doesn't edit. You're going to share your secrets? Don't lick my mouth. Okay, let's go outside, boys. channel today I have a very highly requested video and that is how I edit my Instagram photos so I have six photos that I'm going to show you and I'm very excited because I've already done it and they turned out really well so yeah um let's just get into it then I'm gonna screen record on my phone so I'm gonna like put it right here so you can walk through it with me okay okay Okay, so I have, this is my beautiful, aesthetically pleasing iPhone homepage. I'm very happy with this. Um, and if you're interested in learning how I did this, leave a comment down below and I'll walk you through it. But this is the next page and it's ridiculous. So I really need to work on more than just one page, but anyways. Um, so the main things we're going to be working on is in Tezza which is the blue, I mean, the orange one with the eyes on it, then Snapseed, which has a little leaf on it, and then Facetune, which um, has the little blue and red head thing. The other ones, I might do in a different video, but those top three are the ones we're going to focus on today. So let me just upload these into Tezza. I'm just going to upload these, and I usually put them in my favorites so it's easier to find. And my favorites goes all the way to the top for some reason. So I'm just going to add all these photos and push done. Okay, so I have these top six photos here. Um, two of each girl. I have three girls and I have two photos of each. So I'm going to start with, so the bottom two down here, you can see has a really cool tone and gray hue to the photo. Um, we took these out in the middle, like the front yard of our salon. They're, our salon's a house and so they have a little front lawn. And it was in the shade. It was a sunny day but it was in the shade of the house because it was my last appointment. So that's why it has kind of a more um, cool toned look to it. Whereas the other four were taken under the porch in um, with a, the white background with all of them, but it was under the porch and it was overcast. So these were all taken the same day, but towards the end of the day it got sunny and in the beginning of the day it was super overcast. So I'm going to edit the um, bottom two to start. So let's just click on this and then you click down here, edit. So it brings up the photo. What I like to do first is go to this little like the second button and then go all the way over to crop and I push four or five and this is I just like to see where I want to line up this photo first before I start editing she's kind of off center which I like and and then I try to center the hair all together so there's even space from the top of the head to the top of the photo and from the bottom of the hair to the bottom of the photo that's what I try to do sometimes it doesn't work that way with just how the photo is taken or if the hair is super long or something like that or the background there's something in the background that you can't get away but that's what I try to do so then I'm gonna go to the first one which is the edit one with the filters my favorite filter to use on my hair photos is vintage and I think vintage comes with the free version of this app 
Um, I have the paid version because I literally use it all the time and I use almost every feature. So um, this is by far my favorite editing app. Um, so, but if you don't want to purchase it because you just want to use one filter, I think Vintage is on the free one. So I'm going to click Vintage and as you can, like if you hold down the photo, you can see the original and then you can let go and see the edited. This is like max, like 50%, like, well it only goes to 50, but 100% filter and that's ridiculous. It looks crazy. Nothing like the original photo. So what I usually do is I start at 25 and see how I like it and I'm always tapping it to see what is the most like the, how the hair looked um, in person. Um, so I start at 25. I usually never go past 25 on my hair but then sometimes it's too much and so I'll go down to 20 to 15 and sometimes to 10 depending on how I want it to look. Now this photo was a little dulled out because of the shade it was in and so I'm going to do it to 15 because I think that looks like the most like it did the day of. So then I'm going to click the check mark. Then what I do is go back to that um, second little thing the like where you can do all these different things and I go over to HSL which helps you adjust the different colors specifically. Um, I always go over to this one and click the blue because I don't like a gray background or like a blue tinted background or hue around the photo. I like more of a warm tone like a tan or a beige. So I usually try, especially on photos that have so much gray or like a blue hue around it like these because they're super cool toned, I try to take out all the blue so that it has more of a warm feel to it. That's just my vibe. That's kind of more how my hair color looks anyways and it helps make the background really white which I like or like a beige and since she's wearing pretty much the same color back like shirt as background it kind of blends in but that helps the hair stand out even more so that looks good to me so I'm gonna click the check mark and I'm gonna click save at the top left and you can see it changed it now what I'm gonna do because I have two of the same photo or how I would edit it the same. I'm gonna click copy image. It still has that um, orange ring around it and click copy image or copy edit. And then I'm gonna select the other one that's the same thing and I'm gonna put paste edit. So then you see that changed um, that second photo to match the first photo. Then I'm gonna unselect first photo and hit edit so I can crop this photo because it doesn't edit the crop like it doesn't copy the crop um, it just edits all of the colors that you did so I'm, now I'm going to crop it the way I want this one to be cropped putting her more towards the center again equal space from the top of the head to the top of the photo the bottom of the hair to the bottom of the photo that's just how I like to do it so that looks good there perfect so those two are done now we're going to move on to the ones with the cream sweater. So right next to it, we're gonna click that photo and then click edit. And then again, I'm gonna to go to the second little option and go all the way to crop and click four or five. And then this one, I want a little bit smaller because you can see you can see the edge of the board in Hannah's hand behind. And I think it looks cool if I leave a little bit more of her body in it and keep the hair kind of closer to the top because it's kind of taken further away. It's not just up the hair. Um, and so this makes it look like a little bit more movement, more like natural, I guess, instead of just like a staged photo. Um, so then I'm going to go over to edit again and click vintage again. And I think I set hers at 25 because it looked bomb. Yeah, so 25, you can see the different changes here. I'm just clicking. Really makes her sweater not as yellow. And just kind of brighten up everything. So I'm going to click the check mark and then I'm going to go back to that second option again and click HSL to do the same thing with the blue, take those blue away. So I don't really mess with the hue and the luminance I go up because it brightens it up and it really matters within the bottom corners. That's where I find it the most, like the bottom corners of the background. And then the saturation. If I bring it all the way up, you can see the bottom, this bottom left, I mean bottom right corner, 
is super blue and if you go all the way to the other side it's white so I like to take it down because again I don't want the blue that looks good all right click the check mark and then save and then again we're gonna go to copy edit and then I'm gonna select the other photo of her and put paste edit so then it paste that edit and then I'm going to deselect the first one and keep the other one and now we're going to crop this one so we go to the second option go to crop four or five again I'm gonna keep her a little bit higher up just because I think it looks really cute and candid and she looks adorable so we're gonna save that good okay now the last two photos of the girl in the gray we're gonna select the one right next to that last photo and click edit um, again, this is like the same deal we're going to crop and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I don't really want her other hand in it and then I want to center it again trying to keep it where the top of the head to the top of the photo, the bottom of the hair to the bottom of the photo are at the same distance apart. I'm slouching. I'm like getting shorter as I go. Um, after I crop it, I'm going to go back to the filters and click Vintage. And as you can see, it takes all of the yellow out of her hair, which this is where you can get deceived. Because her hair was not ice white. Because I don't do ice white hair unless they have level 9 hair anyways. Um, so that needs to go all the way down as far as I want. 25, I want a little bit more. Um, I like 20. Let's look at 15 and see what it looks like. 15's good too. I'll do 18. <laughs> In between. Okay, click the check mark and then again I'm going to do that blue thing where you go to HSL and I'm going to take out the blue because I don't like it. Check mark, save, and again we're going to copy edit and click the second photo and paste edit and then I'm going to crop this second photo real quickie let's see perfect okay save that okay now that I've edited all these I'm going to select them all and click save so then that's just going to save them all to my camera roll amazing now what I'm gonna do is I have two photos that really have like so I use a poster board for my backdrop. I have two photos that you can really see the lines of the poster board because I get the one, like the tri-fold ones, and we tape it open, but you can see the lines um, of the folds. So whenever you can see those really well, I like to take them out. The two that were taken under the porch, you can't really see, and I blur the backgrounds anyway, so they're going to kind of go away. But the ones that were taken out in the grass with the more cool tone that we fixed you can see the lines, so I'm going to take out those lines. So I'm going to go into Snapseed, which is this top middle with the little um, leaf on it. I'm going to go to Open Photo, and it's these two. So here is one of them. So what you're going to do, see how you can see those lines in the background, like the horizontal lines? Not a good thing. So we're going to go to Tools, and we're going to click Healing, which has the little cross band-aids. Click that and we're going to zoom in on these lines and you can just draw over them and they disappear. Now you have to be careful because sometimes it'll pick a section of the image and replace it so you can have funky looking things. So just that's why I zoom in to try to avoid having those weird patches. As you can see like it kind of did it there. So you have to do a little bit more or a little less sometimes. Let's see. See how it's doing that? I don't like that. Okay. That'll be fine because we can edit that. We're going to blur it anyway. So then we're going to go over here and do the same deal. Get as close to the hair as you can, but sometimes you can't get that close because the hair gets all moved around. Once you try it out, you'll know what I mean. It's kind of hard to explain. Get that little dot. Okay, that looks better. Um, there's one little tiny one down here. There we go. 
Okay, now I'm going to click that check mark and I'm going to go to export. And so there's two things you can do. You can either save as copy, which is just going to make another vi image in your camera roll, or you can do save. And what it's going to ask you is if you want to save this as a modified photo. So it's going to replace the image that you just edited with the edited image. And I like to do that just because I don't want a ton of like steps of how I edited photos like saved in my camera roll. It just makes my camera roll cluttered and it's already full. So I usually save the modified one in place of the other image because I'm not going to use the other image by itself. So now I'm going to do that same thing to the other photo that we took. Snapseed. That's usually all the stuff that I do is I heal the background. Sometimes if Hannah's hand is in the way or the edge of the poster board is showing, I can take that away with the same technique. Um, but for all of these, nothing, I could crop it out. So that's that. And then I'm going to go into Facetune. So I'm going to take the same two photos that we just edited and I'm going to check my um, client's face to see if there's anything I need to correct. Usually they appreciate that because they don't want like a zit or something there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm going to do patch. So she's got a little bit right down there that we can take away. Good. Um, and then maybe right here. Awesome. And then I'm going to click the check mark. And then what I'm going to do after, if they don't have anything that you need to correct on their face, great. Um, but then I'm going to go to defocus, which is over here. And then I'm going to click blur. And I like to blur the background just to make any blemishes go away if they're in the background and make the hair really pop. And since I have just a plain background, it works pretty well to just have it blurred and then you click the check mark at the top and then you can click saved camera roll and so now I'm going to do that same thing with all of the other photos <laughs> kind of how I edit all of my hair Instagram photos. If you're interested in how I edit my YouTube videos or Instagram stories or Instagram videos, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not following me on Instagram, it's at Hair by Lexi Dawn, and why aren't you following me if you follow this channel? Um, so yeah, check out Hair by Lexi Dawn. That's my Instagram. That's where you see all the photos that I just edited. And I will see you in my next video, guys. Peace.